Hello everybody, this is All South Gaming and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play the Banner Saga 2. In the previous episode, we got through a couple battles, allying ourselves with some horseborn, or more horseborn in the process, and finally making it to the walls of Arborang. But it seems not all is well in Arborang. And we left off with Ludin wanting to push ahead towards his father. I'll push ahead, Prince Ludin says. My father will want to see me, and I'll be able to find out what exactly is going on here. Your son and a few fighters escort him through the crowds towards the walls. Old Adkan's people are here, you hear a woman from your caravan shout. I have to check on him. Others are finding familiar clans in kin as well, slowly drifting from your banner. Let's see... We stay to together until we're behind Arborang's walls. Gets you 20 renown. Say nothing, let them choose. Costs you 112 clansmen, 13 fighters, and 23 supplies. Can't really afford to be losing supplies at this point. If you leave us, you are banished. Costs you 63 clansmen, 22 fighters, and 10 morale. Bring them here. Bring Atakan and the others to us. Gets you 10 morale, 141 clansmen, 22 fighters, 8 varl, and 10 renown. Bring them here. Atakan and the others to us. Or bring Atakan and the others to us. Some of the folks around the fires look half-starved and gladly join, making their way towards the supply cart. Others pack their meager possessions and fall in line. Alright, well, it didn't seem to bite into our supplies too much. Where the crowd is the most dense in volume and numbers, the caravan comes to a stop. Ahead, you notice a sharp line where the tents and people stop. The ground beyond is pinned with arrows and not much else. A few hundred yards of empty space between these people and Arborang's walls. What is this, you ask, confused by all you are taking in? That's the peaceful bit, an older fighter says near you. He looks the type who has seen enough things to lack enthusiasm for much of anything. The King's men can't kill us from the walls, and we can't kill them from here. Well, what's caused the fighting, you ask? The man smiles, his face unaccustomed to the action. Come on, Sunder Slayer. It's the same damn, damn thing that causes every fight. They've got something we want? They've got, well, they've got something we want. King's got food and protective walls. We're starving with our asses facing that rolling darkness. His words deal you a heavy blow. So, Arborang's at war? The man laughs a wicked laugh. That's putting it lightly. From what I can tell, this is the rest of our kind. You brought the last of the Varl and even dragged in some of worthless horseborn. This fight's for survival. Winner lives, loser's gone forever. He laughs. His laughs turn. <laughs> His laugh turns into hysteria and you leave unsettled. Oh, that's not good. Let's see, Forced March and Leader of Clans. Let's see, Forced March. Reach Arboring in 100 days or less. Yep, yeah, we got that. As for... Let's see, Warmonger, no. Hold up. Clan... Here we are, Leader of Clans. Bring 400 clans to the safety of Arboring. Or, Clans men. The Ox are tended and tents align. As best as possible. Some are repairing their armor, others look anxious to talk to various clans. Viral King's eyes scan the fields and he approaches. I want to know what's going on here as much as you, but we better find a way to defend our gear and supplies. These other clans could form a mob if they discover we have food. Seeing the hungry eyes all around you, you agree. We've got an issue, Oddleaf says. I don't know why, but the other clans don't like the Horseborn. Or the Varl, for that matter. You're starting trouble, and I'm going to stop it. Decide what to do. Now, let's see. We can join Hakon in establishing defenses. It gets you, or it costs you 18 fighters and 2 Varl. Later on, if we side with... <sighs> if we side with... Eh, yeah, screw it. We're going to have to choose between siding with one person or another. I'm not going to say names. If we side with one person, and the person I intend to side with, you lose 12 clansmen, 4 viters, and a varl. If we side with this one person, even if another character is dead, 
you lose 27 clansmen, 21 fighters, and you lose Barl. Like, all of them. Let's see, investigating the standoff between king and clans costs you 18 fighters, 2 Varl, and 20 morale. Later on, if we side with someone else, we get... Uh, we lose 108 clansmen, 74 fighters, and 33 Varl. If we go with Oddleaf to stop the Troublemakers, uh, it's the best option if we side with another person. But later on, if we side with the first person, we're going to lose 108 peasants, uh, 74 fighters, and 33 vo uh, Varl. Honestly, with what I plan on doing... I'm going to join Hack on in establishing defenses. You post a few guards before assembling a team to help you find wood for stake walls. The work is hard, even with the help of Hack on and a few other Varl. When the wood is cut and hauled back, Hack on turns to you. We do the heavy lifting. You tell us where to build it. You instruct a few others to oversee your plans for a rough defense of structures. Mood has changed since you started working. Another clan attacked us and we lost some people, a fighter says. They said we're wrong for bringing the Varl and Horseborn along. You feel they're accusing stairs, but say nothing. As soon as you find a stump on which to sit, you look up to see Rugga approaching. The former governor is backed by Dagger and nearly 50 fighters as he walks toward your camp. Everyone watches out of curiosity more than concern. I've discovered what these battle lines are all about, Rugga says. The king's shut his people out. These clans are here to see that he feeds and protects his people as he is supposed to. And they've chosen me to lead that cause. He laughs at your incredulous luck. <laughs> I'm just as surprised. Yeah, sure you are. But I need to talk to you in private. You nod and the two of you enter a large, empty tent. The tent flaps closed, leaving you and Rugga alone. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Ah... Okay, there's actually some more options going to with to take care of the uh, troublemakers, so I'll go over them. Skathatch has his weapon drawn. A few Varl are standing near him with shields up. Humans in growing numbers are hurling every sort of curse at them. What's the problem here? If you are playing as a Let, gets you a battle. If you are playing as Rook, it gets you progress. Walk back to your fires or it will make you wish you had gets battle. Instruct Scathatch and the Varl to back away slowly, gets you morale. Ten morale. The man glances at you, uneasy about the look in your eyes. Back away, or we won't stop until each of you are dead, gets you fifteen morale and five renown. Yursa, teach them some respect, gets you battle. I'm offering you some meat and food to leave right now, costs you five morale and eight supplies. Instruct Scathatch and the Varl to back away slowly, gets plus ten morale. Well, Odd, it's time to teach them some respect. Gets you battle. Okay, the tent flaps close, leaving you and Rugga alone, both armed. This is insane, isn't it? Can you believe what's happening here? I'm not clear on what is happening here. I wasn't making that stuff up outside about the king. He really has shut all of us out. It started a few months ago when he started stockpiling food and slowing trade. Once the wealthy families were all pulled inside the walls, he shut the gate. The only thing he's said is that he can't feed everyone. Oh, and his archers fire on anyone who gets close. You watch Rugga closely while deciding what to say. Let's see... There is one thing... That gets you... That is predicated, or an option predicated based on Ludin's death. But obviously that didn't happen. Okay. Wait, how did you come to lead the clans? Borisgard is the... Was the largest human town next to the capital. You don't become governor of a place like that without certain skills and powerful friends. And what are those certain skills? The governor just smiles. To what end? That's what the upcoming battle aims to find out. You want to go to war and a to ask the king a question? No, I got want to go to war to make the king answer a few questions. That, like why he'd leave his people outside the walls to starve. 
so you plan to break down his walls? That's the last thing I want to do. We need those walls to stop the dredge and whatever else is coming behind them. But if we have to destroy them, we will. Maybe the menders inside can repair any damage. Maybe. That's a big maybe. There might be ways past these first few walls, but the black wall? The governor just shakes his head. You watch Rugga closely deci while deciding what to say. So this war is unavoidable? Probably. I officially met with the king in a, uh, meet with the king in a few hours to either come to an agreement or pull our banners from his. I won't be surprised if you're invited too, the mighty Sunder Slayer and army. If so, make your decisions carefully. His tone is not exactly threatening. Not exactly. You move to the tent flaps and both of you open them simultaneously so that no fight breaks out. Okay, we got people to talk to. Uh, Scathatch? Scathatch and Deldryu pace nervously, keeping their distance from humans, Varl, and other horseborn. Roek patrols around the two a short distance away, nodding to you briefly. Is everything okay? Many mans. More than we know live. You stop to look around at the thousands of tents in the fields and hundreds of homes beyond the capital's walls. I'm from a small village. I'm not used to seeing so many people either. Maybe herd too big? So many mouths hungry. Some dead. More easy feet heard. Scathatch stomps the ground and says a few shrill notes to Derdryu before turning to you. Derdryu forgets we are not of same thinking with mans. If you think Big Herd is right, we will think Big Herd is right. But what do you think is right, Scathatch? A male horseborn looks up at Arboring for a few moments while swishing his tail in thought. I think Big Herd kick each other in small fields. He points to Arboring. Small fields behind walls. You thank them for talking and offer them a few calming words before departing. I mean, he's not wrong. Alright. Trigvi, what have you got for us? The former cragsman is trying to lure something out of a hole with a small piece of dried meat on a string. He leaves it dangling by his side while standing to talk. Looks like you're keeping busy. I'm playing fox and hare with a vole. Do you think fox has ever played Trigvi and vole? No. Trigvi looks disappointed. Do you have any ideas on how to keep two groups from killing each other? Any powders or relics or crazy schemes? He reaches into his tunic and grabs something, pauses, releases whatever it is, and shakes his head. People kill each other every day. Just enjoy the show. But if it comes to war, I don't think either side will leave us out of it. Trigvi thinks about what you are saying, tapping a fingernail against his teeth. He looks at his finger, sneers, and spits. Killing kings requires a lot of lives. It's just, it's just as easy to kill clansmen instead. Either way, some will praise you and others will throw dung at your face. Or you could collect all the dung in a giant hill, stand on top of it, and be your own king. As you watch him crouch back down to the hole, you wonder what possessed you to speak to him. Aleo, I'm surprised we don't have the option to talk to Hack on. The Scald is tying a dried strip of cloth into his daughter's hair. Or dyed strip of cloth into his daughter's hair. But sends her off to play as you near. We've come all this way for war? With luck, I might change their minds. And be the reed that would stop the wind? You've got a lyric for every moment, don't you? Of course. Plenty before us have been in similar situations and written about it. We only think our lives are unique. And if peace is not an option, is there a scald song for that? Plenty. But I'll tell you what I'd do. Save the families who can't save themselves. I can't imagine if my wife and children were left out here, like they don't deserve the same protection as others. Leo's words flood your thoughts as you walk away. Alright, well, let's check out the heroes. Shouldn't... Nope, she hasn't joined. Not yet. We can do some training. I don't think we really need it. I really don't plan on doing the challenges. Matter of fact, I think the achievement for that's a little too late. Oh, well. Market. Bjorg of Ledar. Let's see. Two armor per turn. Strav's Bond. Plus one to strength talent, plus two strength. Knockback on strength three. Eh. 
Namagis's ring. Namagis, yeah, Namagis? Yeah. Ring once worn by one of the great kings of men to symbolize the unification of his people. Two strength resist, one will per kill. Nah. Oath of Ander. A ring of bygone kings and slaves, scribes and warriors, an eternal promise of strength for the task at hand. Huh. Oh, that's odd. Well, nothing in the market for supplies. Eh, I'll grab it. Alright, nothing else to it. Let's head for the meeting tent. Before you head towards the large tent, Oddleaf stops you. Are you certain you're ready for what could happen out there? Her worried look is infectious. The king may be a decent man, but I doubt he's kept his throne by always following the real rules. We got nothing else to it, Odd. I'm prepared for whatever the king and clans decide. I'm glad to hear the confidence in your voice, Oddleaf says. Just be careful. I'll be back here with the rest of the clan if you need me. You smile and make your way past the line of clansmen, marking the boundary of the peaceful bit. The voices coming from under the tent are loud, animated. Best we could do. Best we could. You've done well. I never thought I'd see my son again. Ah, Manolf. Yeah, I can see the resemblance. Well, we've all had easier journeys. King's cheerful mood lessens. He is about to say something when he sees you approaching. Who's this? Greetings, King Maynolf. My name is Alette, and I'm from Skogur. Luden steps forward. Father, this is the Sunder Slayer I told you about. King Maynolf glances at you and sighs. Son, you can introduce your, introduce your pretty country girl later. You and Luden both turn red, but, your temp, but you temper your anger as the king addresses Hakon. Pains me to hear you've lost so many of your hardy warriors, Hakon. But tell me, where's Yorinder's Kender, Vognir? Vognir died protecting your son. I was Vognir's Kender. With Yorinder's death at Einar Toft, I'm king of the few remaining Varl. King says nothing, contemplating the news. Your walls are the last hope for my people. No sense in denying it. I understand. And of course you'll have refuge here. The least I can do for bringing my son back alive. It'll be tight, but I'm sure we can find a place for you. King Mainolf, Alette here is just as much responsible for your pr for the prince's safe return. She has quite a few clansmen. Careful, Varl King. This is the human capital, and my generosity is already stretched thin. Akon looks at you and shrugs. Tell me, girl, why are you leading an entire caravan of humans and horseborn? Why didn't one of the men take point? Oh, boy... He's going to make it really difficult for me to side with him, but I don't have much of a choice. Yeah, King Mainolf is one of the people you have to choose to side with. The other is Raga. And honestly, at this point, we don't have a choice but to side with Mainolf. For reasons I will get into. The clans trusted my father, and learned to trust me. All of them? No, some didn't like it, but some people didn't like my dad either. King Manolf watches you for a moment before chuckling. That's a valuable lesson learned. The sooner you realize you can't please everyone, the sooner you can get to doing something worthwhile. Unfortunately, it doesn't change how many Arboring can support. Only now do you see Rugga, Dagger, and two dozen fighters approaching. King's guards look concerned. Raga Mainolf. I should have killed you when I had the chance. You tried, remember? And here it comes. Did the Sunder Slayer convince you to open your gates to your people? You will never enter my gates again. I'd hoped you died in Boersgard. How has you come to speak for all of these clans? The people you've turned your back on? It seems they needed a leader they could trust? Again, how have you come to speak for them? Did you fool them like the people of that rotten town you governed? The only fool here is the outnumbered king believing he still has a say in what happens now. Don't make us breach your walls. We'll just have to repair them once we're inside. 
Okay. All options lead to the same result. Remind them of the rumors of Dredge. And when you two wear each other down, who's left if the Dredge attack? Mainolf doesn't know the first thing about fighting Dredge. He's been insulated too long. I earned my throne by strength, Rugga. I can demonstrate on you how I'd handle the Dredge. And what? Fail to kill me again? Alex, look at your people out there. Our people. They need food, clean water, not that poison in the river. They need protection. You cannot allow this king to keep us from safety after all this way. She doesn't have to. I'll find a place for the people under your banner, Alette. And now you say that. A place inside the walls alongside the barl. A place this feigned man will never be allowed again. That's enough! Both of you are bickering like children instead of leaders. And you, giant. Joining this king after all we did to keep your people alive? Traitor! Hakon growls and flexes his grip on his axe. All parties look angry and tense, and then they look at you. Okay. My banner, my people, are my only concern. Side with the king. Rugga is right. Too many will die out here for so few inside. We'll side with Rugga. You will be forced to kill Yursa and Ludin if he is alive. If you side with Rugga, even when Ludin is alive, all the Varl will leave you. And you will also use nine peasants. The right choice here is to side with the Varl. Whichever side they are on depends on the state of Ludin. If he is alive, side with the king. If he is dead, side with Rugga. If you side against the Varl, you will have to commit genocide. So, like I said, this was decided a long, long time ago when we chose to not send Ludin and Dagger out to kill some Dredge. Because if you did that, Dagger would obviously kill Ludin. So, because Ludin's alive... Because we got the king, or because of Ludin's alive, the Varl will side with the king, and because I don't want to have to commit genocide against them, I'm going to side with the king. My banner, my people, are my only concern. Oh, and any losses that you take were I detailed up when you, was, when you had to decide between establishing defenses or going with Yursa slash Audley or investigating the standoff. My banner, my people, are my only concern. Good. I'm granting you and your people, even those horseborn, into my walls, but move quickly. I thought I taught you better, Alette. This isn't how you play the game. Alette's journey. What is that one? Meet King Manolf with Alette. Urga blows three quick bursts into a war horn. You look back and see a fight breaking out along the defenses you built. Humans and Varl defending your camp. You hear Rugga swearing at his failed ambush. Twelve clansmen, four fighters, one Varl. Without warning, Rugga pulls his cloak pin dagger and lunges at King Manolf, who shifts slightly, the blade only piercing his side. Before anyone can react, Rugga slinks behind his fighters who are charging you. Hakon and King Mainolf. Everyone to the walls, you shout. Protect the king and the Varl. Hakon nods his appreciation just before the clamor of war envelops you both. And now we've got a battle. I mean, we were getting a battle no matter what. Uh, yeah, I'll stick with this party. Ambush, Mainolf, you're wounded. Or ambush, Mainolf, you're wounded. Just a flesh wound, though I feel... odd. Depths take Rugga. Rally the troops. Okay. Thresher, Cragsman. Let's see. Raidmaster, and... A raid master. Honestly, these guys ain't gonna be much trouble. Let's see. Oddleaf, let's move you over here. I'll send... 
Gunnolf over here. Hakon can go here and start hacking up these guys. Send in Eggle for backup. And... Although I get the feeling these aren't the only enemies we're going to be facing. Because who knows? Oh wait, there's also these three guys here. Whoops. Okay, let's get Eggle in here and have him go for a stone wall. Draw the attention of these guys. Ah, and there's Dagger. Alright, well, let's get Hack on in here. Tempest to these guys. Which almost takes all of them out. Rug has even been recruiting Cragsmen? Of course he has. All right, I'll let you go on Overwatch. It's not gonna do much against the Cragsmen, but still. Uh, hmm. Slag and burn here. We're lucky we'll hit both Cragsmen. Take one out. Wound to the other. Ugh. Okay, Attic, you get over here. Call for a bear. Hmm. Bear? You take on this guy. Hakon can take out these two. Gunolf, you get over here and take care of this guy. Alright, go for a level two. Hack on, you get here and tempest these two, take them out. Yeah, saw that coming. Alright, this guy's gonna be next, but he's either gonna be forced to take damage or what have you. Alright, start breaking this guy's armor. He's probably going to try and go after a let, but can't really stop him if he does. Slag and burn him. Okay, then. No, do not end your turn. Alright, this guy's done for. He just doesn't realize it yet. Bear, take him out. Okay, that is that taken care of. See, King Manolf regains his footing and falls back towards Arborang's walls as his forces rush past him and into the fray. You wave the banner of Skogra and your clan surrounds you. To the gates! You shout over the clash of axes and hammers on shields. By the time your caravan is inside Arborang's outer wall, the gate is mostly compromised. Rugg's forces are on your heels and they brought bears. Cut them off or they'll overrun us! Shouts King Manolf before wincing and grabbing his side where Rugga stabbed him. Now then... If you sided with Rugga, you get a different conversation. Get inside those gates or we're finished, Rugga shouts over the maddening roar of the rushing army. You heard him, charge the gates, gets your battle. Separate the king from his guards, Canary gets arboring battle choice set to two. Canary starts the fight by pinning one of the king's guards. Hack on that burial will choke us off, gets battle choice three. 
Hack and destroys one barrier in the center of the battlefield. Oddleaf, I need you to take out those archers, which gets you the best choice of battle choice one. Archers are forced out from behind the barriers, and Oddleaf takes their place. She acts independently as an extra fighter. Now, unfortunately, I just saw the time has run out, so... Yeah, we're not going to be able to, uh... Keep going on this one. So we're just going to have to end things off there. So, yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised at Rugga's betrayal, really. I mean, he definitely seemed the greedy type, and he... Evidently, Mainolf has already tried killing him before, so add Vengeful to that list. Eh, and I... I don't honestly believe all, oh, I do this for the people bullshit. He probably just wants to kill King Mainolf so he can take the throne, and is using the people as his tools. But as I just said, we're out of time, we're gonna have to get into that next time. So, if you guys like what you see, please leave a like, subscribe for future combat, uh, future combat, future content, still thinking about fighting, anyways, yeah. Subscribe for future content, don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications for when I upload, or to hit the straw pulling to vote for our next Let's Play. And please, leave a comment down below this video. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching.